Hello there. Uh, it's been a week, maybe. Last time we were discussing about how to run code in the sense of how to evaluate code in your head and some properties, mostly about strict, strict evaluation. This time we are going to be talking about what is a function, more like in the line of what is an abstraction and even better, what is a good function, how to think about functions, how to make functions. And yeah, that's it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, uh, share the video, follow me on Twitter, you know, basic stuff. So let's start. The way that I like to think about functions is not in the mat classical mathematical sense. A function being an operation that maps from a domain to a codomain. So, you know, you could describe addition as a function. You could describe increment as a function. You can describe a lot of stuff as a function. While that's a good view, I'm not sure it's the right view as a computer scientist. It works more alike, but I still want to keep some properties about functions. Here, we're going to be talking about pure functions. So they are still mapping from a domain to a codomain, uh, but we are going to be talking more or less in the line of a subroutine, which is a function is a thing that does the smaller thing or like the simpler thing. And for me, the way to think about it is more in line with how the Lambda calculus define a function, which is an abstraction. Let's think about why is a function an abstraction? Uh, what does it mean for a function to be an abstraction? And what is a good function? To start, I for me, the right way to think about that is what does it mean for a function to be an abstraction? Abstracting over what? In the lambda calculus sense, we are abstracting over terms. So let's say you have an expression, which is one plus two. Simple expression, we have one, addition function, and two. What does it mean by turning these into an abstraction uh, over terms? That means that some of these terms, they need to stop being a constant, they need to stop being a known statically in the sense, and they need to move to be a parameter. What happened here is now instead of my instead of my expression being one plus two, which means you have three, of course, now we can operate on a much bigger term set. Okay, now I can do one plus two, I can do two plus two, three plus two. And it's not about reducing the lines of code. It's more more or less about having a name, having a concept, like avoiding copying it over and over, but also as a way for your simple ape brain to think about it. When we do this, I can easily describe the previous the previous x by doing doing add to one and this is exactly the same that we, uh, we had before which is one plus two but now i have a name it's not a very good name to be clear but we can do we can do better let's think about it as a way to generalize any term so let's say i have i want to map a list that's traditional we always do it here okay i do l with the empty list of course maps to the empty list and let's say we want to do like a list of string to a list of integers so here yeah, the opposite seems better. I do string of int, yell, and map L of the L. Oh, map of the L. What this is saying is we are going to keep iterating over the list until we get to the end, uh, and then we are going to make it back, but with a different element. So here we go from int list to string list. That's pretty straightforward. The thing is, this function only works for integers to string. It only works for doing this operation. What if I wanted to map uh, the, the opposite way, which is int of string. I need to copy it. There is a couple of properties, like this function may fail, it's not a total function. But you can notice it's about the same code. And especially the way to think about it, it's still a map. One is a map from an int list to a string list, and the other one is from a string list to an int list. But the important thing here is they describe the same transformation on your head. You can think about it as two functions, but I would personally way much rather do say that it's a single function that maps in this way. What I change it? I replaced a term, which was before concrete, okay, by a parameter, which I don't know. That's the important thing here. Inside of an abstraction, I don't know what the, does that term means. If I have a type system, I may know a couple of properties. For example, inside of this function x, I know that this x is an integer, so I can do addition, but I don't know which integer. I don't know what is the term of it. I don't know if it is one, two, three, four, or five. If something is internally abstract, so internally you cannot know what it is, that means that externally it can be generalized. But that also works for type inference, by the way. If you wonder how Camel can infer this, it's because internally we did not change the term, the type of f. So the type of f can be externally general, polymorphic in, in this case. But now I made this function, which correctly describes the behavior of the, those two functions by one uh, exception, which is, I don't know which transformation specifically, I generalize it. Of course, I can get the original function by doing uh, map string of int and l, and also int of string 
Ja. Map string of int. Int of string. And now, first I have a single way to think about it. Also, I have less code. Less code, it's always a nice feature. Uh, less code means less stuff to maintain. But there is important differences here. If I know what is a map, and a map is a good, a good, a good function that you can know by just looking at the type, you have an intuition for it after a while. But if you know what is an, a map, you're gonna be able to reason about this without understanding how the map is done. Maybe this map is doing a mutation internally to, because this is not the fastest way to implement it. The fastest way to implement it is through TRMC. Okemo now has TRMC built in into compiler on 4.14. Imagine you implemented it in a completely different way. Maybe you did a C, wrote it in C and, and just bound it. The important thing is I have the name, I have the concept in my head, I have an abstraction. We have many abstractions when we are talking about functions in general, but I like to think about, about them as this. I can give you a couple more examples of an abstraction. A good one is if you look at church encoding for Booleans is pretty straightforward. Uh, that's true. So true is A, B, A. False is A, B, B. There are similar functions, but I much rather say, we are go to A, to A, to A. And then I'm gonna say here. So I'm gonna annotate the type to ensure they have the same type. And now when you have a Boolean, you're capable of reasoning about it without knowing which Boolean you're operating on. I know that this is being annoying, uh, but I can give you an example. I can have a function that expects a Boolean. That's very, very straightforward. Uh, so let's say we wanted to do, to do an if. We are gonna get a Boolean, uh, that's called the predicate. I'm gonna call it then and else, okay? And how do we do it? Let's say it's true. If it is true, we know it's gonna call A. So I do true, then, else. What you can notice here is, let me type it. This function has the type bool, two expressions, A, A, to another A. Because OCaml is a strict language, I would much rather do this. Okay, so there is, a, I know it's slightly different. It's unit to A. So that you can do it lazily and you can actually represent like this. So now you can see if it is true, it's gonna call this. If it is false, it's gonna call that. We can call this, I, I'm gonna be doing if true. Here I'm gonna be saying print and line to true. Let me remove that. And false is gonna be not to true. When we run, we get to true. What you can see is that I described it booleans strictly using functions. Because boolean is an abstraction. It's an abstraction about a piece of data that has two possible states. And of course, if we have the lambda calculus, if we have enough polymorphism, we can describe it using church encoding. You can see here printed to true, here printed not to true. But what does that enlighten? enlighten me is I can think about functions as introducing a concept. They describe a concept where you don't know a, a bit of your code. And in general, you can see that by looking at the parameters. In general, the parameter, like a good function is gonna have its parameters being a, about the same concept so that you fill a hole. So the function itself is a box with a hole that needs to be filled later. The hole are the parameters and what you put on it is the argument. So here we are calling it with string of int. But after all, you're like just doing an abstraction over terms. This is a good way to think about it. After you start to look on this, we can code some examples on what is a bad function. First, you can see these, these works. This is just classical church encoding. And you can do any sort of Boolean. Like uh, if you have in OCaml, because you can encode system F, you can do the full church encoding. You can do church numerals um, and etc. But let's think about a couple of functions, okay? Let's think about a function called make. It's gonna be user.make. So it's inside of the module user and we know it's gonna make a user. It has a name, it has an ID and the user is gonna be defined uh, as an ID of int and a name of string. So this makes a user. This function is pretty straightforward, but what you can look about it is it does not have any of this notion of user being a record. Of course, now here you can see that it returns on a record, but let's abstract the type away. With functions, you can abstract terms, so like you have a function from a term to a term. So it maps one term into another term. Here it maps into a record. Okay, Mo also has this notion of a type abstraction, which allows you to abstract a type essentially. So now you don't know which type you're dealing with uh, externally. And I can go here and I can make myself. My ID is gonna be zero. My name is gonna be Eduardo. 
All right, what is important to understand here is I don't know about the internal representation. I don't know, just by looking at this function, I have no information, what is it creating? Okay, I know the type of what it's creating, but I truly don't know if it is a tuple, if it is a, a record, I can easily change it like this and be like ID and name. Same function, you can see that externally, it still does and user.t, but the important thing is I don't need to think about it. What I only need to think about it is about the type abstraction. That's how you do most abstractions in OCaml. But even if you're not into a typed language, if you are on JavaScript, if you wanted to do a user, okay, uh, you could easily define an user by saying that you have an ID, a name, and then ID, a name. You don't have types yet, but now we have this notion of all users must be created over this. Of course, that's a, an implicit rule. It's not as strong as this because there is literally no other way to create a user if you are not calling this function. But here we have a convention and that's pretty good because I can know by knowing the convention, I can know that all the users were created using this function, which means I can get username. It's going to be user, user.name, or let's say user ID, which is user, user.id. And this behaves the same no matter the language. If you have first class functions, that's a thing that you can do. If you don't have, it's, it's kind of more tricky, but that's very important. That's especially important in the, in the context of a higher order function, such as map. When you have a higher order function, such as map, you have a transformation and you have a callback. But the thing is, you don't know what to callback. You don't know which transformation to have. And you cannot know because this is not known at the declaration side. This is only going to be known when you call the function. And because of that, you need to have this notion of, okay, that means that this trans transformation itself is abstract. But you can still do relations if you have something abstract. You can still think about it. A transformation function just goes from A to B. Be it A whatever, be it B whatever. The important thing is your function constrain it in in such a way that this transformation makes sense. That's also the true for other concepts. Uh, if you look at monads, for example, you're gonna have, in OCaml we call it return and bind, in Haskell is pure and bind. The important thing is, first, you don't need to know, but even if you knew, you don't need to use it to reason about what is the data being created? What is this function doing? You can just think about it in an abstract way. You can think about it as a map. You can think it about it as a bind. So let's say we did option.bind. And now we know this is a bind. How is it implemented? Option not bind. It did not help. How do I know what it's doing? Because I know that the bind function by, by knowing the name, by knowing the concept name, essentially binds if it is sum, it goes, it, it maps the sum to another monad, to another option in this case. If it is none, it does not map it. The interesting thing for me here is this is a very simple function. Like it's a very simple function. It's implemented as this. So we can do uh, rename it by M. Very simple function. I still don't need to think about it. I can think about it in a completely external way and just assume that's what it's doing. That's the same for most functions that you're gonna find on your day-to-day, on your day-to-day -day life. Like most functions are gonna be simple. They're gonna be doing a couple steps, a couple transformations, maybe a side effect here and there, but still, you can think about them as abstractions. You can think about them as introducing a concept that simplifies your domain. You don't need to think about an implementation detail. You don't need to think about it if it is none, if it is none to none, or some and then none. Like that, first, that does not matter in OCaml, but even if it mattered, you don't need to think about it because you know the end result. You know the domain and you know the codomain. I personally don't like to think to think about it in, as in terms of domain to codomain, but it's it may be useful for you. And of course, you have the opposite thing, which is what we, we discussed at the last time. What we discussed at the last time was you can do application and application is the opposite. The application is removing an abstraction. So when I do this, I can say, yeah, fun, F L. I can do this. First, now the function is inlined, but because I know f, I can replace it here. Uh, wait, I replaced it in the wrong place. So this should still be map fl and f being here. Of course, that's not gonna work. This transformation strictly is not gonna work because you need to go here. Uh, but if you go here and do this, now it works. And of course, you can remove the parameter and that's the thing, an abstraction, a, a function, it creates an abstraction. 
In an application, it destroys an abstraction. It expands. It expands to a bigger expression. I think that that was it for today. Uh, this concept is very, very simple. But the important thing here is keeping in mind that when you're doing a function, you're abstracting over terms. There is other kinds of abstractions. There is abstraction over types. We call that a type constructor, which is just a type function. There is abstraction of, uh, from types to terms, which is polymorphism. And there is also dependent types, which is values, uh, terms to, to types. Those are uh, more advanced. But when you understand the power of the lambda, when you understand the fundamentals of what is an abstraction, what I'm trying to do, like I'm trying to simplify stuff. I'm trying to hide hide from the world as uh, something. Something may be messy, maybe not. Uh, after you understand that in, into a deeper level, it allows you to move code around. It allows you to think about code in a systematic way. And especially it allows you to start developing intuition for code. That was it for today. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, follow the channel, retweet me on on Twitter. Follow me on Twitch. I do live streams almost every day for a lot of hours. If you don't know it about it yet, please go there. Uh, that was it. Thank you all for your time. See you in the next day. Bye.